So I want to speak today about a um, removal of a curse, curse removal and the last time I did a curse removal um, back a while ago I met a lovely lady of Italian descent, a very beautiful woman, um, she was in her early 60s and um, just, just turned 61 and um, very Italian looking, uh, very intense, dark eyes, uh, came to me about a problem, well, about moving forward and about moving forward, she wondered about moving to America and didn't actually mention a curse to me. Um, I took her up to um, a nature reserve um, that I know um, to do the reading up there because it's sometimes better to go um, to do it outside rather than inside, especially with the energies of the trees of the nature reserve are really beneficial. Uh, so as uh, I picked her up and as we were driving, she was talking about her life. And before I met her, my uh, spirit guide um, said to me, I, I was pretty depleted in energy. And my spirit guide said to me that he would um, he would help me with this reading. Uh, so I thanked uh, my spirit guide and said, please do go ahead. I feel uh, pretty drained. So um, as we were driving through the um, nature reserve, uh, she was telling me about her life. And then she got to the life of her parents. And I heard from this that there seemed to be a generational curse um, happening in her family bloodline because of the misfortunes um, that had befallen her and her parents before her and grandparents they had the energy um, the energy of an attack um, inside them I could hear that and I told her that I believed a, a generational curse um, had taken place on her family, which was um, the Sensi family. She's given me her permission to um, recount this story. Um, the Sensi family, um, it's a famous, a famous bloodline. And then she recounted to me about um, how her grandfather, who owned a delicatessen in Old Compton Street in London, an Italian delicatessen, had told her that she was part of the famous Sensi bloodline and that they had been cursed a long time ago. Um, it seems that they had had some kind of argument with the Vatican back in the days of old. And her grandfather had recounted that um, the Sensi family curse was um, recounted by Lord Byron. He had written about the curse and he um, knew Beatrice Sensei, who, um, who was cursed by a certain Pope, I believe. Now, my memory's not very good around the story. It is a really interesting story, and I will put some links below to anybody who uh, wants to know more. Um, also, if anybody has a, an enlightenment around the Sensi bloodline, I would like to hear. Um, her grandfather told her that they were Italian nobility. Um, so when we got out of the car, I did do a reading around this lady and she was indeed um, connected up to this bloodline, but it did bring the curse with it. Um, it was quite interesting. She then passed me a photograph of her grandfather. Um, and as soon as I saw it, even though his eyes were covered and it's sometimes difficult to read the energy of photographs where the eyes are covered, but his energy was so psychically strong he came through straight away um, he passed some personal uh, messages of love to his granddaughter and then he was giving some information about here and he gave us both information that um, the darkness here was going to increase um, and keep increasing and there was hard times there was hard times ahead and um, he also said very, something really interesting. Um, he showed me a vision and it was almost like dark, dark smoke, thick, dark smoke. And this thick, dark smoke was arriving almost like a meteor um, to planet Earth. And when it hit 
planet Earth, um, it seemed to kind of go through it and carried inside this um, dark smoke. As I was seeing, obviously it's not dark smoke. That's how my little mousy mind um, interprets it. And um, inside it was some, um, again, my mind interpret in this way. It's obviously not this way. Um, hooded figures, uh, very powerful almost like on the Lord of the Rings when those dark riders, almost like that dark riders, um, magicians, they were magicians and um, hooded and cloaked. They were almost very like somebody recently was talking about Max Spears um, being attacked by black magic. And when they were speaking, I remembered I did a radio show with Max Spears, which is out there online. I can't remember which uh, particular one. And I had spoken to him when he was speaking to me, I said, I'm getting a really strong vision of you that you're um, doing some colouring in and you're colouring in. And it was the same hooded figures. And I said, you're colouring them in black, deepest black, and they're angry with you and they're going to take you away. And um, he said, well, I would never, I think he misunderstood me. So he said, I would never colour anything in black. And I said, no, no, no. You're portraying them. You're, you're, now I see it. He's um, interpreting that it means that he was um, exposing them. So that's quite interesting because they're actually headed this way. So he was exposing them. He was, you know, bringing them out. Look, this is darkness and it's coming. And he was, um, the colouring thing, I think, is the um, portraying. He was portraying, he was talking about them, and I'll have to go back and listen to his speech to see um, what part um, he was talking about these beings. Um, and I kept saying that to him again, and, and he seemed to get me wrong and said I wouldn't colour anything in, in, in black. Um, but he, he was um, expressing the evil of them, and I didn't explain it very well to him. But as he was speaking, I kept getting the vision really strongly, and um, he was just taken away by them and then somebody below said I think she's predicted his death and looking back um, to people talking about Max right now I think I think that that was what happened and the next time I saw these hooded uh, magicians is in the um, vision for this lady um, given to me by her grandfather who's passed over to the astral and it was very interesting so they arrived in this cloud it was seemed to me to be like dark smoke and it hit into the earth and um, kind of exfoliated out. And these beings, whatever they were, they were very highly intradimensional. And um, I'm seeing them as, as hooded without faces in long black robes, um, but they were massively powerful. They were like magicians. And people of the earth began to worship them. They somehow arrived and people of the earth began to worship them, but they were really dark, but massively powerful. Um, that struck me as, as massively interesting part of the message that this very beautiful man um, passed through. I could literally feel him. Um, I could feel him so much. I had to go after the reading and drink red wine and eat pasta um, because just that lovely Italian that was um, what he did for a living. Uh, you know, he ran delicatessen with pasta and, you know, lovely Italian stuff. And it really came through me really strongly. <laughs> that longing for uh, that longing for it as I um, channeled him. And um, so that was a really interesting um, reading there. And then what I did, I just did a meditation um, with the lady. Um, I, I think she, she won't mind me saying her name. It's Lisa. Um, I did a um, meditation with Lisa, I took her up to the sixth dimension and I just had a look at her etheric body and her astral body and she had a lot of attacks there and she had these usual when people um, are um, have these generational curses, they do have the um, shackles, mostly it's around the neck, sometimes around the ankles and wrists and so I removed them and I went in, looked at a different chakra points and at the sacral chakra, they, there was also kind of an attack there with um, arrows stuck in. Um, so she had quite a number pulled on her 
I took quite a long time to remove everything. Um, it took, I would say, maybe half an hour. And afterwards, I was very really drained. You know, I was really, really drained for days afterwards uh, because it is a massive um, amount of my energy, um, you know, to, to remove them. You know, it's something that's been put in place for a long, long time to these different um, people as they pass down the generations. And obviously the energy that puts it there doesn't want it removed. So I come in for attack afterwards, um, which can drain me as well. And um, interestingly, interestingly, she did need a top up as everybody does. And I pointed her in the direction of um, some, um, sorry, where is it? I wrote it up here. Well, Okay, let's have a look at it. Um, Psalm 55. Um, now, it's always best after um, a removal of these things to do a backup. And the backup is always Psalm 55. And it's good to do it for about a month to take Epsom salt, just pure Epsom salt uh, baths every day. And while you're in the bath, to read as many times as you can the Psalm 55. Um, so this lady didn't really feel... Um, that she could because she had a um, certain dislike to the church, which it, it uh, which is going to be the case because of the clash of her bloodline with the um, Vatican. Um, but you know the Psalms go back. The Psalms are ancient. The Psalms are the Psalms are ancient. Um, I, I don't know where they came from. Um, is it King David? But they are totally magical. I mean, I had um, a time when I was I spent a lot of time in, in writing and um, I put masses of energy into writing, ended up, um, had to leave where I was living, didn't have anywhere else to go and the book hadn't found um, a publisher. So I was in a massive, really, really bad state and I went, um, somebody pointed me in the direction of uh, some magic and I went um, I, I, I went to you know why different space and did some some magic and everything that I'd asked for came true um, it is massively powerful the Psalms are so massively powerful I don't know the secrets of the Psalms I've tried to look it up there are a few books out there I bought them and then when I read them it, it just doesn't have anything it you know it's a, or read this psalm, you know, well, <laughs> okay, that's fine, you know, I, I didn't want a book that says, read this psalm, something will happen, read this psalm, you know, that that's easy to, to work out, I wanted to know what's going on with them, why have they got this power, where do they come from, I mean, how does the power manifest, how is it working, I wanted to know the undersides of it, and there doesn't seem to be a book out there that, that I mean, if somebody knows of a book out there like that, please post below. Um, so the reading of Psalm 55, after one discovers a generational curse, there, there are a lot of them. I had one put on me, not by someone so powerful. Well, it might have been. I did grow up in a Jesuit-run orphanage, so it might have been from the Vatican. Um, but it's always good to um, to, to get it removed. Um so Psalm 55, let's read this. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and hover hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof, deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me that I could have borne it, neither was he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, that I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. 
for wickedness is their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast our burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in me. So this is a really good psalm, and if you um, can hear the power of it, imagine sitting in a warm bath with like a good um, couple of handfuls of Epsom salt, and you get out and you feel cleaned on the inside. Um, so anyone that's listening to this, you know, they want to go and put it on their mobile and sit in a bath like that and um, dunk the top of your head, your crown chakra in the water. It is massively, massively cleansing. Um, there's also a lot of Steve Noble uh, meditations about breaking um, curses. If you go onto his YouTube, Steve Noble, N-O-B-E-L. I will try and link it below. I'm, I'm not great at doing links. Um, and he, he, he does a lot of um, cleansing, um, cleansing of cords, that kind of thing. So you can listen to that. And also try to anoint yourself with rose oil. So if you buy rose oil, I know Neil's Yard do a good one. It's about £25. You, you mix um, a couple of drops of that with some almond oil, spin it around with your finger in a saucer, and then apply it to your heart area, apply it to your throat area, and that lifts the frequencies. And all these things can help these um, shackles that were put on certain people, that were put on certain bloodlines. And, you know, they were done... This was done on mass, uh, magic on mass, to um, attack all of us, to make us not psychically powerful. And um, it's all changing now with these new energies, with the ascension that's coming in. Um, of course, darker energies are coming in, like these um, these magicians that are on their way. I don't know if they'll appear to us as ET or um, what kind of arrival, but people will begin to worship them, which will be uh, the wrong thing to do. Um, so... This is quite interesting, but things are changing right now. So try and um, try and bring up your frequency. Uh, the rose oil is a great way of doing it. The Steve Noble YouTube, he's got so many meditations. Also listening to the Love Hurts uh, music. Um, just put in love and then hurts, H-E-R-T-Z. Um, love frequency music. We just play it sometimes if you're feeling depressed, anxious or bunged up. And then you play it, it really it makes you weep. And to weep is to clear out um, a lot of stuff. And then you find relief afterwards. I felt very much in a bug the other day and just felt awful. And I didn't know why. I had a strong feeling of dread. And I managed to um, I managed to get to my tears. And I have very bad IBS and stabbing pains in my stomach. And I used that to get to my feelings and I sobbed and sobbed and cried and cried over everything um, that um, had happened recently, you know, this, this and that and, you know, relationships. And I had a good cry and it lifted and my, my IBS, because I've been eating comfort eating wheat, uh, was still present. Uh, but I felt such a feeling of clarity and such a feeling of release. And we forget sometimes we think, oh, I'll, you know, have a glass of wine or I'll have, you know, a piece of cake um, to feel better. But what really makes us feel better is when we cleanse it out. And there's nothing better than a really good weep. Um, so if you put on this um, love frequency music, it can somehow, sometimes, well, often actually get you to a place where you have a big weep. And then after you've had the weep, it really does bring a lot of mental clarity. And you can see there is light out there. Um, there is light, um, you know, things are getting really, really dark, but things are also getting light and we're rising up. Our consciousness is rising. So it's coming away from this physical world and it's going into the other dimensions. So we're getting extra powers as well. So we need to claim them, grab them and realize it is real. 
Um, some people were saying that they are feeling that life's just a dream, feels like a dream. But we must get our um, we must get our grounding in these other realities. I've shared a lot about um, astral travel, and um, I shared a lot about spinning. Um, I was spinning a lot in the astral, and I didn't know what it was. I'd literally go into the astral and just grab other people that were there around me and, and just tell them to get on a sort of pedestal thing and spin and sometimes I would go up on a trapeze put something in my mouth and then just spin and I thought what is going on and I researched and researched and finally came across a book called Lucid Dreaming by Stephen LeBerg and he puts in there about spinning now if you spin in the, literally spin you spin your astral as fast as you can like a top it's shown on the movie Inception where you been kind of a um the writer must have known about that kind of thing um spin like the top it's not just a totem the spinning action where your body spins like that top um makes you more aware in the astral so if you can try practicing that it's a good thing it makes you um lucid dream more which means waking in the astral and having that as an extension of your consciousness and having that become heavier so you become heavier there so you have a kind of like a continuous life you kind of go to bed and you have a life there as well in the astral and you have your physical life and so continued consciousness is is a good thing it can, I, I find it overwhelming if I have it for too long um, but you, you know you, you can do a lot of good out there in the astral and these energies are going to become more real to us as time as time goes by so in a way it's dark times it's end times i think of this physical earth um but it's it's exciting times because it's life in other dimensions and you know what i get you know i i am a spiritual medium what i get when i listen to people speak to you know loved ones or whatever here they constantly say um it's better here it's better here it's better here. constantly hear that um so i do wholly believe that um it's better than the fleshy life because it's uh, more vibrant, more of a life. It's more life. It's There's no such thing as death. It's not um, in any way a death. In fact, when we leave this fleshy body, we go to more life. I mean, I did a reading for a guy one time who was really upset about his father. His father had passed on and had a little bit of a difficult death. And he was very, even though this is, 10 years before he was very obsessed with with what happened that he'd been given too much medication his father had too much medication at death and his father was saying um you're so maudlin why are you thinking about that and he said you're the one who's dead i'm not dead you're the one who's dead um you know and i i find it quite interesting to witness this to be a channel for this because you know what comes through is is fascinating you know and it's always so positive it's always like so exciting uh the idea of what we're going to face when we go when we leave this fleshy body but you know that it is this massive um exciting uh more life um and it, it's thrilling you know it's thrilling for me um because i have that message you know put into me so much by people over the other side so much about how exciting and literally you can uh, be anywhere you want to be by just thinking it you know if you want to live in a, a castle you just imagine it and then go inside it i mean you know it is really exciting um and of course you're grounded there when you are there but now we have this option of having two lives to make our uh, make something there while we're still in the physical body to visit with uh, people that are already there um i'm lucky that you know i'm a psychic clairvoyant clairsentient that i can do it already i have my friend hugh who's um you know um he he went in 2011 and you know i know that you know he's there and we will have adventures when i get there so it's quite exciting as well to have friends that are already there um so it's interesting what i don't like about 3d is the fact we feel so trapped in when we're here we've got our noses pressed to the ground and it feels like it's not alive it feels trapped in it feels cardboard and i think you know 
it's getting more and more like that and it's it that's a horror story that's a horror story about life but we must remember um the magic side of life the you know the supernatural the supernatural is the real this uh 3d is the unreal um and a lot of people are feeling very trapped in with it they seem to be making it heavier and heavier um the people that are somehow warring with humanity and i don't know why i don't truly know what the spiritual battle is about but part of the um attack on us is that we feel smaller and smaller and smaller and as we feel smaller we kind of come out of our power because we're not supernatural anymore we're just little you know we might as well be syrian hamsters in cages um we're not living our true lives we're not living our big lives we're living mundane lives where you know the walls of our house are the only thing we have our relationships around us are the only thing we have well life is actually isn't like that that's an illusion you know we we've got relationships with with other entities with angels you know with god god is um you know um is with us this massive supernatural being that i mean think how supernatural god is i mean you literally are talking about all the dimensions and what he can do and can't do and that is we are we're god's child you know so we're like god's baby so you know it's horrible for us to be trapped in this like papery cementy kingdom that we're not supposed to be in it's almost like we're locked into a dimension it's almost like we've had an ugly magic spell put on us and that we're locked up and it's it's not good and then when i do you know for like uh miss sensei i do the um you know unlocking to a certain extent um you know of the generational curse we're still locked in this dimension and the idea is to get free and we can get free by just lifting our frequencies a bit and start to start to think about um the other world start to have things around us that um remind us of the other world i have a halloween um skeleton it looks like a proper skeleton head it's i got it on halloween um it's very convincing but i have that you know on my windowsill in my bedroom and why do i have that there it's to remind me that i am only here for a short period this isn't real how can it be real if we're just here for a short period obviously it's not and you know i will be in that shape not long it you know it won't be long it will go you know i haven't got that many summers to go it will go really quickly and you know i will then be as that and is is that skeleton is that me that that bone that um that uh bone that will crumble it will just crumble to clay that's not me um so obviously i'm something more than that i would take then my um further journey and go on to into the dimensions and so we need to connect with that now when we're here we need to not take this life of clay and cement and sand we need to not take it seriously because it is a prison it's something we shouldn't ever have been locked into it was never intended that we be our energy be locked in here um so the more you think about the supernatural the more you let your life become more and more magical the more and keep safe obviously in these other realms there is um attackers keep safe you know keep god safe talk to god um talk to jesus christ he's another savior you know in these realms he will keep you safe and there are entities that want to help you there are angels there are you know even jinn um that are benevolent that you know that assist um keep your wits about you it is another world you know it's the world um of the other dimensions and it's bigger than here you know it's 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 bigger it's more exciting you know it's it's amazing it's a kaleidoscope and we are just trapped in this tiny little three three dimensions if you think how tiny that is it might as well be one dimension it is horrific and i know certain people are feeling that and feeling depressed over it sad anxious depressed um please don't take antidepressants that will even trap your mind even um into a um more heavy a third dimension use the rose oil use the um love hurts on youtube there's loads of them um just you know oh how am i feeling tonight um so 
music is a good way. I listened to Peter Gundry uh, and Then They Were Masks. It's a track and Then They Were Masks by Peter Gundry. Um, sometimes if I'm feeling like particularly trapped in, I'll put it on my earbuds and really blare it loudly and it just really sends me. Um, some people might find it a bit dark, um, but I just find it hugely supernatural and it really helps me get out of my body. Um, so I'm going to end and it was just a talk really on generational curses and I hope you've got something from it and take away something and thank you very much for listening and thank you um, Cynthia for letting me share your amazing story I didn't go into great detail um, and I haven't researched um, that bloodline but you know if anybody out there wants to research that bloodline the link with Lord Byron and the Beatrice Cincy, uh C-E-N-C-I please do <laughs> and then share below because it is an interesting story that you know so such a you know I find history so romantic and um what a lucky lady to be um to have that powerful bloodline there's so many powerful bloodlines out there I do believe at the moment that um India the Indian people they have a gorgeous bloodline it's um you know it's very mystical and it's interesting that the COVID is hitting that hard um, out there in India right now, uh, you know, it, it's, it's evil is afoot right now. These are, these are bad, bad times right now. Morality is low. I can't believe the Channel 4 in the UK, Channel 4 program, people naked. It's a dating thing, but people are naked. And the other day in um, mainstream, they were talking about this guy getting excited and describing, you know, what happened to him. I just no um and then there's billboards going up around everywhere i couldn't believe it saw it in the guardian there was a woman must have been aged 89 something like that she was she looked good she was good looking uh naked but they weren't showing they just showed just above her breast and um saying oh i like my toys and we all know you know what she meant by that they, they have the word in there i'm just not saying it on my video here um you know it's no that's wrong. Even a young woman saying that. Why is that on a billboard? And it's pornographic. I can't say the word. Pornographic. Pornographizing our society. So we are just not only are we trapped in 3D, but we're trapped in a pornographic 3D. So it kind of brings the fleshy. So the fleshy is rammed in our faces. And so it becomes more and more and more and more animal. So we get more and more and more pushed into that Syrian hamster cage. So I'm saying Syrian hamsters because we used to keep them, so I can see them in my mind's eye. Um, we get more and more trapped into that um, hamster cage and we're kept away from the supernatural. Do you see how things like that in our minds, make, you know, you see, you think of sex straight away. And so it push, you know, sex should be, when you see the person you love, you think of sex. You know, when you're in a darkened room with them or a candlelit room, then you think of sex. Not driving along the street in your car and you look at a billboard. I mean, what the hell is that? I don't want to that. And that keeps your mind instead of, say, you're driving in your car, you're seeing the trees and suddenly you think of God and you think God made that beautiful tree and the leaves are swishing. No, you see some um, naked woman talking about da 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 toys. That is to keep us, to keep our minds trapped in, in the third, okay? Don't look at it, look away, it's not good. Look away, look at the tree. Um, don't let them manipulate you. As I say, there's a lot afoot right now and it's, it's, it's bad, but there is the good out there. Um, and the good is the higher, so please, uh, please connect. Please say a prayer today. Please Google that Psalm and, and read it. Get yourself an Epsom bath and read it out loud in the Epsom bath and all your enemies you know we all have enemies I've been trolled in different YouTube videos by this one and that one and people keep coming and telling me about it please don't tell me about it you know it's up to them they want to you know see this and that and this and that you know I don't need to know and you know please don't be a delivery boy on, on, on that kind of stuff um, it's not necessary um, to deliver it to me I really don't want to hear it um, so, and also bless our enemies, bless people that are talking about us in a negative way. And um, if you feel attacked, read that powerful, powerful um, psalm because, you know, God's there for you. God has your back. You're not alone. And you've also got the power of the Spirit 
um, supernatural. You know, we all have our beings that are surrounding us and that protect us um, from this kind of thing. We don't have to sit in a position of victimhood. We can say, um, you know, to spirit guys, I don't like that. Uh, please do something about it. So we don't have to sit in a powerless situation. We are not powerless. Um, we are powerful. Um, we need to reclaim that. So I'm going to end it here. I'll go on forever. Thank you for listening.